Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the principal of Reliance Incorporated and U.S. Navy veteran, Glenn Pangalinen. Thank you. Good morning, and I appreciate the opportunity to come here and share our story today. Um, and I wanted to start with a quote from Abraham Lincoln, and it really describes the reasons why we are involved in the work we're trying to accomplish today. Slavery is founded in the selfishness of man's nature and opposition to it is his love of justice. And these principles are eternal. Today, there are 30 million, roughly, sex slaves throughout the world. Most of those are little girls and boys and women. And Talk doesn't fix the problem. It doesn't bring it down to manageable conditions. What it does is it simply has them sit exactly where they are every single day that they're sitting in a room with no one to come from. In the Navy, my specific job while assigned to the Naval Special Warfare Community or Naval SEAL Community is that of intelligence collection, interrogation, and implementation and development of projects based on those information and, and problem sets. And when I say intelligence and operations, you know, I think of home. And where I come from is the island of Guam. And I remember in the early 1940s when the Imperial Japan Army occupied our island, they enslaved all my family members. Were, were, some of us are descendants of people who lived in state of oppression and, and mine have. And the one thing that I remember most is not the 31 months of enslavement where they were having us do forced labor to, to solidify the Japanese defense lines. Um, what I remember most is my grandmother and grandfather constantly laughing about how many times my grandfather got hit in the head with a board because he forgot to bow. Um, but as a child, the biggest thing that came out to me was how grateful they felt when the US Army, Navy, Marine Corps, and the Coast Guard came and liberated us from that evil. And so we wonder now, as an entity, why not? And why not repurpose what we do and what we come from into the human trafficking situation around the world. And we believe that there are entities out there that exist, but we disagree with some methodologies. And we've, we realize that we have some skill sets that only us have and acquired. And so we've repurposed some special skill sets and in intelligence and in interrogation. And, and when I say interrogation, it sounds extremely violent. And a lot of times you think of these movies, and this is Zero Dark Thirty. What took very long to get to this point was a lot of conversation and interrogation. And, and when I talk about interrogation, I'm thinking of the time I spent in Fallujah. And the conversations were really soft. And it didn't seem like you felt good on the other end of the interrogation. But I was simply asking questions about how I can make your life better. And it wasn't violent. And this is what you think about when you look at our communities. Illegal drugs, arms trafficking, and human trafficking are the main pillars that we've discovered in our fight in Iraq and Afghanistan that fund human or fund terrorism. So we're very focused on terrorism, and it's a lot of the talk these past couple of years. But what we do is we categorize the importance. Um, we put drugs on top that funds terrorism. And so does arms. And we try to remove those centers of gravity so they don't, so they don't breathe. And they eventually kill themselves. Human trafficking, though, is a 32 to $150 billion industry. And that gets an honorable mention in anything, in any talk of terrorism. And in our experiences, we realize that when you remove these entities or these these uh, funding streams, this is what ends terrorism over time. This is an Army Green Beret who's still on active duty. And 
we get movies and the Army Green Berets don't. Um, the reason why is we depict everything that's violent because it's a good movie. And these situations, this guy is a 18 Delta who is a, a medic. And through intelligence gathering to bring us to this region where they're mostly Taliban and understanding that they're cattle herders, they do that for a living, we ask the questions of what we can do for them. And this, this man loses most of his cattle because at a very young age because of disease. So we brought this medic out there and we did vaccinations. And then that led us to the next conversation, education. Why can't girls go to school? We built the school for boys and girls. This is Army and Navy Special Forces money that goes to these projects. It's not a movie, it's not, it's not cool, so it doesn't make it into the films. You know, bazaars during conflict oftentimes don't get supplies. Us helping them move supplies so that they can continue trading with the tribesmen throughout the region, especially the nomads, it was critical to them. And we were removing that based on our presence. And so this is stuff that, again, doesn't make it in the films. All these things are very critical when you're thinking about how you defeat those who are enslaving women, girls, and boys. It all comes back full circle. And this is an Afghan commando that we took out after a year of training and, and teaching them how to connect with the community and what he can do to get his information that will allow them to not have outsiders come out and ruin their quality of life. This all also includes human trafficking. When girls and boys in their villages are getting taken and being sold for sex slavery and no one sees them again, no one cares because they're poor, they're not educated, and it's not someone's problem. It hasn't been central government's problem. And so we allow them these empowerment. So our organization, Reliance, looks to train police and military elements around the world and give them an intelligence capacity for tradecraft, teach them how to do operations, and teach them how to do the social development and rehabilitation post-rescue. So this needs to be prevented. The Yazidi girls from being taken in the Singar Mountains. The Chibok girls that we all know from the Bring Back Your Girls movement. This is what I'm talking about us applying ourselves to. And this is a gang-related situation in the triangle areas of South America and Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador. These guys are using women in prostitution to fund the drug trade that ends up on our shores too. This is all terrorism related. And methodologies used by nonprofits today, it's, it's not their fault. This is a different realm. And the taste in our twisting is different. And this is what we want to do. We want to exact quick impacts in a short period of time. And we want to do ourselves out of business because anti-human trafficking is not a business model that you should expand on a, as a long-term enterprise. Because if what we're doing is good and is making a difference, we should be able to kill ourselves in doing that business and move on to social development and the things that we know and love and do. And that's training and economic development for disadvantaged communities. So I'm gonna end with what I think is really important in that veterans have intangible wealth. And that is usually realized when you put blood, sweat, and tears in communities you help to come out of the situations they're in. And tangible wealth is important to a business, but more importantly, you do the things that are important for your family every day that you wake up. And that doesn't make you any money, but that's critical. It's critical to that involvement in your life and that life cycle and keeping that house intact. And at the end of the day, we're not just veterans in the civic title you give us veterans. We are the legacy of all those who were displayed up here who gave their lives ultimately so that we can enjoy what we enjoy today and we're gonna remember them tomorrow. So I'll leave you with a quote that George Washington said and it is this, it's when you assume the soldier, you didn't give away your civic life, you kept it and that's why we're all circling back to what we're doing today. And, you know, remember the legacy and not just the word veteran. It's a legacy. And we call you to help us serve and, and help us with our methodologies and help us get better and, help, and come around the world and help us do good things. So I'm Glenn Pangolin and I am a son of Guam. I'm a U.S. Navy veteran, Chief Petty Officer retired. And our motto is Semper Fortis. And that stands to represent the phrase always courageous. Thank you very much for your time. <laughs>